What's the one thing most people don't know about you and would be surprised to learn about you? I rap. I rap. I actually thought that I would be a rapper. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the Black Wendy channel. The Black Wendy here. Thank you so much for joining me for yet another Wendy Weekly episode. If you're new here, I hope that you stay and you subscribe and you join the family. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for supporting the journey. Um, last week, I did not post an episode on here because you guys, I was so sick. I was so so sick i had to listen to my body like i had to just take a break and um, make sure that i fully recuperate before coming back to youtube but i'm back now and i'm back with um a very unique video this is not something that i've ever done before so um i just want to send a huge shout out to my friends i love you guys so much thank you for supporting my little youtube channel thank you for sending in some questions um so basically what i did is i asked abang and mommy uguti um they send me some questions that they feel like they don't know about me and this is inspired by a conversation that i actually had with the muji because we were cooped up in the house um and i was sick and he was kind of taking care of me um we had so many conversations over the past few days and one of those i remember us just saying muguti when you live with someone and when you have someone in your life and there's constant communication or communication that's constant enough you tend to think you know what i mean like i was like to Muchi, just because i asked you how you are or how you were yesterday doesn't mean that i know how you are right now and actually just because i asked you how you are in the morning doesn't mean it would see much i still know where you're at you know what i mean so i think it's very important that we check in on each other um and have a clear sense of how the people we love are doing so when i reached out to my friends today i was like guys i just had this idea i'm pretty sure i got it in my dreams um because <laughs> i didn't know what episode to put out just after recovery you know so i sent my friends some messages and i was like guys this is the kind of video that i want to produce for my channel this week please send me questions ask me things that you think you knew about me but you didn't or something that you're curious about when it comes to me because again we can't just assume because we know everything about each other because we love each other um and they were gracious almost all my friends sent through questions so shout out to you guys i love you so much thank you for doing life with me and thank you for doing this episode with me let's get into it Okay, so I'm gonna jump right into it. You guys are gonna see me paging through my phone a lot for this episode, so please bear with me. I have to actually read the questions. And I'm actually reading 90% of these for the first time. The only person that I actually had a back and forth with, actually I spoke to um, Lesejo and Nusuku. We were talking in the morning, so I have a general sense of what they were curious about. But everything else I'm honestly just reading for the first time. Cool, so my friends had um, a choice about whether to be anonymous or not for this q and A. I I was like, if you just want to ask me a question and keep it moving, let me know. I don't think anyone asked to be anonymous, actually. So I'm going to go right in, starting with Unwa Bisa. This is a career question. What is something you regret doing that's turned into a positive in how you approach your career now? Um, man, I struggle with regrets. I don't think I have any regrets in life, honestly, truly. I think that I... Not that... I don't think that I've moved the right way each time but i think i've moved carefully over the years that i've spent on earth like i've been a very cautious person and so i don't really i don't really have regrets and even some of the mistakes i made i don't see them as like regrets but there was um, a huge job opportunity that came last year around this time last year actually for me and when I tell you guys that I felt like it was a dream come true and I was like, oh my gosh, I get to exercise my mind in a different way. Um, I'm working for a very cool client. Like this is going to be amazing. I'm wearing a different hat as well. So this like really challenges me in my career. I put everything into that project and everything into those presentations and um, it didn't work out. 
in the end so in the end i regret it just because of all the time that i had put into something when i could have been focusing um on other clients and in other areas that would have actually paid me back whether it's like a financial payback or an experience payback or an opportunity payback like this thing just went dead um so i just regret more than anything the how naive i was um in my movement with it like i saw it as like you know my told my dream come true it's, oh my gosh it's a dream come true it definitely comes from god and you're not discerning you're not asking people for advice you just see it as what you think it is and so you throw everything into that basket um so that's what i did last year but it has really worked in my favor because it showed me my scope it really taught me that i can go beyond what i think that i'm actually even on paper that i'm actually just like way more than i actually am able to perceive and that has made me really brave in how i move with my business so it sucked as as an opportunity and that person sucked as a client but what it did for me like 13 months later i'm able to be like you know what actually because i was able to work that hard on that project i'm able to work even harder on projects that are actually worth it basically her next question is about love what's the biggest thing you've learned about yourself through the love you've received and given to usipo um what i've what i've learned actually is my capacity to love and uh my capacity to be loved you know i didn't think that it would be so vast and so massive um in its offering like it's so abundant i live in and i get to experience and enjoy abundant unconditional love um there are many opportunities that i feel like muchi and i could have taken like the cheap way out or um the prideful egotistical way um to approach a situation but we always choose love in those moments um and vulnerability in those moments and i just did not think that that's something that i could ever experience i think love in any capacity whether it's friendship relatives um love for your own self i think that when you actually start to participate in it is when you actually understand the gravity of it you know what i mean and with this kind of romantic life partner type of love um i didn't know what i expected walking into it but i am experiencing way more than i could have ever expected does that make sense like i feel like i always say this about my relationship and i don't think it's perfect by any means that's not what i'm saying please don't go to twitter and tell people that i said i'm in the most perfect relationship in the world that's not what i'm saying at all we are both 100% human um but what i always say about this dynamic is that If God himself came to me before Muchi and I started dating and he was like what is it that you want in a man I would have sold myself short like the descriptions that I would have given him that I would have thought were perfect for me I would have I would have sold myself way short I couldn't have prayed for this kind of relationship and so I'm really grateful for it and I'm really grateful for the lessons that we both keep learning in in this dynamic Okay, her last question is a personal one. What's the one thing that makes you incredibly proud about a decision you've made in your life? Um what I always say to myself and it's it's my personal mantra and it's something that I say to God as well just to remind him of, hey, I think we both of us made this commitment to each other and that is um every transition is miraculous. Like I I literally live with that mindset. You would see If I'm moving from one point to another, God is doing something incredibly miraculous in between that will sustain me forever he's taking me. So decisions like, you know, moving to Johannesburg, that's the that's the one I think that's the last time I made like a, a huge life decision. Um in 2019 on the 1st of October, I moved to Johannesburg to build a life for myself here and all I had honestly were a massive case. And I knew like one or two people like Nwabisa was here, Zethe was here, but like I didn't know Joburg, you know what I mean? Um and I'm very proud of myself for making that decision because 
it was a faithful decision. Honestly, when people would ask me, how is this going to work out? You know what I mean? And I was just like, I will make a life for myself. I don't know how. I don't know with who, I don't know where, but this is what I want and this is what I feel I should do. And I'm very proud of myself for taking that one-way flight. I remember listening to Stormzy's um, I'm Blinded by Your Grace over and over and over again, flying from Cape Town to Johannesburg, making the big move. And I have not looked back since. And I'm now craving, like I'm itching for another move. Like, maybe another one-way flight overseas. Um, but yeah that's it that's that's the decision that i'm really proud i made okay i just mentioned uzete so i'm gonna go to her questions now uzete and i grew up together we've known each other for how old am i i'm 30 we met when i was 12 we were both 12 what is that very good 18 18 years oh my word that's wild so we've known each other for 18 years. This is my longest friendship ever. Um, so she had a few questions for me as well. One of your big dreams when we were growing up was to work with Trevor Noah. Is that still one of your dreams? Um, I'd like to work with a lot of people now. Trevor Noah will always be one of those people for me. I think that he is a pioneer, obviously, in comedy in South Africa, but also globally. I love the way that his mind works. Everyone loves Trevor Noah. I'm not going to... I'm not going to sit here and explain why I like Trevor Noah. The same reason why you like him is the reason why I like him. And I would obviously love for our worlds to collide and for us to work together. Uh, but I think more than anything, I would like to have a conversation with Trevor. I'd like to sit across from him and um, get to pick his brain. Um, you know, when people say, would you rather take a million dollars or dinner with Jay-Z? My Jay-Z is Trevor Noah. It's like, would you rather take a million dollars or dinner with Trevor Noah? I'd probably take the million dollars and then try to get to meet Trevor Noah still you know what I mean <laughs> so yes I still want to work with him um but the list has definitely definitely gotten longer and the reasons have changed I think before that he was like a superstar and I I idolized him and Everyone, like, I idolized him, I idolized Issa Rae, I idolized, like, these people that I really wanted to emulate, basically. Um, but now, I feel like the energy is different, it's less desperate, um, and it's more curious. So, I think, yeah, I'd definitely love to sit down with Trevor Noah, should it happen, I'd be very grateful. Um, and if we do end up working together in future, that would also be cool. Um, yeah. Okay, so the next question is from Dennis, and he had to be different. He sent a voice note, so listen up. I would like to ask you, what has it been like giving love a chance? I'm not sure if it's again or if it's just giving love a chance properly for the very first time. That would be my question to you. Good luck with the video and all the best. What has it been like giving love a chance scary um there's a video actually that i posted i might leave it for the end of the video that describes love in the ways that i understand it and i don't think that love is exclusive to a romantic partner i think that love has infinite ways to experience it and um experiencing it in this way is definitely incredibly special to me but it was really daunting as well because there's a lot of vulnerability involved. There's a lot of like setting your pride to the side involved. Um, and there's a lot of being real involved. You cannot hide behind any mask. You show up as yourself and you, you hope that that's enough. You know what I mean? And so it's been incredible to be validated in that way, to be vulnerable and to be met with vulnerability whenever i'm honest i feel like i'm met with honesty so um it's daunting it really is daunting to trust someone with your heart but i'm grateful that as it stands i have zero regrets and i am all the better for it actually yeah okay this next question is from my friend bonga bonga and i have known each other since uct days so from 2011 until now we have been friends um and he has this question to ask 
The question I'm going to ask is about how you've maintained your relationship with God in an authentic way. This is something which has come across over the years that I've known you and I've always looked up to you for that. Thanks, Jesus. Um, whew. Man, I could talk about God forever. Oh, am I getting emotional? I've said nothing. I haven't said a single word. Okay, but how I would say that I've maintained my relationship with God, honestly, truly, I feel like God has maintained it. <laughs> For real. I have existed in a space where I'm so confident in my walk with God and I feel like I'm so close to Him and prayer is easy and fasting is easy and forgiving is easy and you know what I mean? And yeah, just like creating a life where God is at the center is easy and i've existed on the extreme opposite end where i'm just like Fuck all this. you know i'm just like i hate everything and everyone so it hasn't been perfect it really hasn't been perfect and i feel like it's in those moments that god has maintained his love for me and so it's always easy for me to come back um that's what i appreciate about my walk with god oh my god why am i getting emotional what is happening but that's what i appreciate about my relationship with god the most it's real it's raw it's imperfect and yet i feel like it's exactly as it should be because god is the one entity that doesn't expect me to show up as anything i don't have to dress up for him i don't have to sound a certain way for him i don't have to be you know pure for him or whatever um all I have to be is myself and I'm loved for that. You know, I'm celebrated for that. And that's how I've maintained it. Remembering that there's nothing I could ever do or say that could make God love me less. Um, and so that's why I'm saying that he's maintained it. Because by virtue of knowing that, I know enough to exist with God fully. In my frustration, in my anger, in my... Um, and forgiveness and also in my highs you know so yeah damn it was really hard for me not to cry answering this question and i'm just like oh sana okay so i feel like this video is a bit long so i might come back with a part two if you guys want me to come back with a part two um i'm gonna do lesuku and nesiko's questions now um so some of them may not be explored today but let me know if this is a conversation that you want me to keep having actually i might just come back with a part two anyway because my friends did take the time to send me some questions um and i really do want to answer uh if not all of them then most of them you know lesuku question one would you consider exploring other forms of writing, like a memoir or a children's book? Part two, would you publish this in Izulu? So this is a dream of mine. I really want to release a series of um, kids' books in Zulu, like children's literature in Zulu. That has been a desire of mine for a very long time. So yes, absolutely. When it comes to writing a memoir, maybe, you know? maybe i'm not sure i haven't thought about it honestly but the thought is tickling my mind <gasps> literally my brain is like tickled by the idea and i'm like i actually i've actually lived a laugh you know so who knows <laughs> okay so the last um question sheet that i'm gonna go through is from lisejo and i'll come back i just still have mo's questions to answer but actually mo's also a youtuber so i was hoping that her and i could actually sit down and have the conversation together and like create kind of a fun content piece together on youtube so if you guys want to see mo here let me know and if you want to see mo here actually go spam her and tell her that you want her on my channel um but her and i are gonna be together i think for it's just because she also exists on this platform i think that's going to be more fun for us to do so let's say home is there something that you've dreamed of doing for a long time why haven't you done it yet my ultimate dream is to create a show of my own 
so to create a series or multiple series that are mine um you guys know this that i've written for tv shows and series and movies and things like that but none of those have been my own yet like that have been published and produced and all of that um something that i really want to do is produce work of my own um and why have i done haven't i done that yet it's because i'm busy <laughs> It sounds so silly to say I'm not doing the actual thing that I want to do because I'm busy. But I have been so fortunate and so blessed to work on quite a number of projects. And if you're a writer, you know how taxing that can be. It is a lot of hard work. It's a lot of hours behind the computer typing away. It's a lot of writing. You write anything from like... 15 to like 90 pages a week you just you never know what's gonna happen that week so um because i've been that busy since i had the idea of the show that i want to produce um i haven't really been able to touch it but i have changed my routine in a way where um hours go to my project as well in the day so i spend time if i'm not really working on it like writing it i spend time researching i spend time seeing what similar creatives are doing i spend time researching what's missing in the space um i spend time getting to know what a pitch looks like you know what I mean? I've now been fortunate enough to be in global spaces, like in, in a room with people from all over the world and people pitching shows and whatever. And I'm just like, I think that it's going to be easier for me to approach it now because of all the knowledge that I'm accumulating. So at least I'm not like just putting it in the back burner and being like, oh, I'm, being um, I'm learning all the skills that I'm learning, making all the co uh, connections that I'm making, uh, making all the networks that I'm making. So that by the time I am in a position where I'm done and I have something to show, um, I am confident enough and I'm skilled enough um, to actually take it all the way as a tv show so we're definitely we're definitely closer than we were last year and next year we're going to be much closer than where i am right now okay so my camera heated up at some point so i don't know where it stopped recording um but this first question was basically what do i value um in a friendship and what i value the most in a friendship is the freedom to be who you are with no judgments and no conditions. Um, for me, friendships are so important because I feel like that's the family that chooses you. Cliche. Cliches are so real though. I hate that cliches are cliches because there's so much truth to them. So I love the fact that like Abangani are people who go, I want you in my life, you know? And what I value in that exchange is me going i accept you fully as you are and i love you and i want to do life with you and the other person saying i accept you fully as you are and i love you and want to do life with you um i haven't had the best experience with friendships i feel like this question deserves an episode of its own um it's definitely something that my therapist and i go back and forth with child friendships have dribbled me more than men have oh my god that's the relationship dynamic that i really really struggle with um and i think what it almost always boils down to is just feeling like i can't be myself around people feeling like they have a preconceived notion of who i am especially if they meet me now in life where i'm like a public figure or whatever where i'm hyper visible um i feel like they have certain expectations and then when i don't meet those expectations then they're bored and they just move on you know what i mean um so i just really value having people around me who just know me and love me and accept me and correct me and journey with me um i have had experiences where people are like oh i love you and then one misunderstanding or one little slip up because you know we're human beings we say things that are out of line or you you know what i mean or like i forgot to call you back or something it's always like the tiny little things that built up into massive fallouts and um a relationship is destroyed so for me i just value being accepted because more often than not i'm probably gonna accept you as you are like regardless of what you know what i mean i'm probably going to show up and be like you know and so when that is not reciprocated i struggle basically 
and i'm not perfect but i'm just speaking to things that i've struggled with in the past yeah Okay, the next question, what is your best memory? My best memory has to be the trip that um, that Muji and I took last year on our birthdays in August when we went to Thailand. And for so many reasons, I feel like Muji and I really got to know each other on that trip. Like, we had already been dating for over a year, but I, I just, there was something about being in a foreign place, so Abili, um that really brought it like we're just like besties we're like i ha i got you you got me like whether someone was like too shwasty or too like sick i remember i had food poisoning and whatever and the way that muji handled that situation and you know but also just who i was in thailand i just i missed that girl i didn't give a fuck i was naked from the day we landed till the day we left. I wore whatever I wanted to wear. Not once was I catcalled. Not once was I outwardly fat shamed. I was myself. I was twerking on a yacht. I was swimming in some random island. I had no care in the world and nothing else mattered. But me and the person that I was with and this memory that we were making. I don't think I've ever felt that free in my life. Especially as a black woman. As a black, thick woman. I've never felt like, oh my gosh, I can do whatever I want. And no one is looking at me. Like, no one cares. Like, no one gives a fuck. Like, that feeling was amazing. The feeling of no one cares is so freeing, you know? So, I had the time of my life. And it will go down as one of my favorite memories honestly um some of those bikinis and like the beach clothes that i wore in thailand are now so deep in my closets like so buried in my wardrobe because you will never catch me in camps bay or a tewini or whatever wearing any of those things because i know the kind of reaction that i would get i've tried it already i've tried the e pray love all the way to durban didn't work felt unsafe um people were looking at me like i'm some like disgusting thing um it was just it wasn't the most ideal experience for me and so that's a part of myself that i felt like i locked up but being in thailand and like island hopping with my boyfriend wearing nothing was literally the freedom i did not i, I didn't even think i needed it until we went there and i did that and i was like I've just never been happier. I've never felt more beautiful. Okay, my camera is really struggling. So last question. What's the one thing most people don't know about you and would be surprised to learn about you? I rap. I rap. A lot of people don't know that about me, but if you went to high school with me, you definitely know that about me. Um, but I used to rap. I actually thought that I would be a rapper. <laughs> I honestly thought I was going to be a rapper. Even when I uh, went to university and I was studying and all of that, in my mind I was like, hey man, if people aren't about this comedy, I'm going to drop an EP. <laughs> I love, I love rapping. I, I enjoy music so much. I love music more than anything, you know? Uh, so yeah, that's the one thing that I feel like people will be like, what? You rap? All I'm saying is, if I drop an EP, you better buy it. And if I go on tour, you better come. You better get those tickets. Um, I don't even know what my rap name would be, actually. But yeah, I I rap. I really enjoy writing raps. I'm not really good at freestyling, but like I'm a really good um, lyricist. Um, and yeah, so that's the one thing that I feel like people probably don't know about me if you stayed to the end of this video thank you so much for staying thank you for watching please give it a like if you enjoyed it that really helps me a lot please subscribe if you're not part of the family let's extend the family let's grow this year um and yeah thank you so much to all my friends for sending through questions if i did not get to your questions like i said i really will like i'll probably release a second video later in the year but thank you guys so much for watching i love you bye Mwah. Yeah.